Again, welcome to St. Augustine Parish as we celebrate the Epiphany. There's a couple of announcements in addition to what Father Shrek said. The Life in the Spirit Seminar begins January 14th, and we will now have child care. Please use the form at stagustinparish.com to sign up as soon as possible so we can plan for food and child care. St. Augustine Parish will be taking a bus to Washington, D.C. for the March for Life on Friday, January 20th. Seats are still available and cost is $35. Contact Janet for details. The readings today will begin on page 762, and our opening hymn will be number 138, The First Noel, and we will begin with verse 4. Again, that's number 138, and we will begin with verse 4.
Bishop Zubik, Father Farrell, the people of Western Beaver County, we welcome you today to St. Augustine Parish. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for bringing the Holy Spirit. Thank you for celebrating Mass today, Bishop. Welcome. Thank you, Father Kim. So my brothers and sisters, we come together at this moment to give honor and praise and glory to God. Let's do it the best way we can with the sign of our baptism, the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Amen. Let us first call to mind our sins so that we may truly celebrate these sacred mysteries. Together we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, bless Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth, 
of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for the country by another route. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So my sisters and brothers, three times in the course of the liturgical year of the church, there is a special proclamation that is shared with all the faithful. For those of you who were at the Christmas uh, Eve Mass, you know that the pro Christmas proclamation focused on the arrival of Jesus, our Savior, in the little town of Bethlehem. Each time that we come together for the Easter Vigil, the great exultant really reminds us of the glory of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And today, the third one of those occasions, we mark the Epiphany Proclamation. And just as we observe that the Lord manifests his presence to all of us each day and in common ordinary ways, he also does so through the great feasts of the church. And so as I proclaim this proclamation today, we're very much aware of who we are as sojourners on the road to God's kingdom in heaven and how the Lord will in fact deepen our holiness through the great feasts of the coming year. No, dear brothers and sisters, that as we have rejoiced in, at the nativity of the Lord Jesus Christ, so by leave of God's mercy, we announce to you also the joy of his resurrection, who is our Savior, Jesus Christ. On the 22nd day of February will fall Ash Wednesday. And the beginning of that fast of the most sacred Lenten season. On the ninth day of April, you will celebrate with joy Easter Day. The Paschal Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the eighth day of May will be the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the 28th day of May, the Feast of Pentecost. On the 11th day of June, the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Jesus Christ. On the third day of December, the first Sunday of the Advent of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom is honor and glory forever and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. First of all, I got to tell all of you what an inspiration it is to see this church packed, and it's a it's a visible sign of the the great work that the Lord is doing here, especially through Father Kim and all of my uh, brother priests and deacon. And you know, I never fail to to share that whenever I come to be back to Beaver County, it's always a special moment for me. Uh, I feel the the blood of my own faith having been nurtured and nourished uh, by being a, a citizen of Beaver County like yourself. And so just want to say a special word of thanks again for all that you're doing to really helping the kingdom of God become ever more real, uh, not only to this part of our diocese, but in all the people whom you meet uh, in uh, your uh, experiences of life. So, you know, as, as I was thinking about uh, coming here tonight, I, I couldn't help but think that uh, 40 years ago when I was uh, on the faculty at Quigley Catholic High School, I was given a challenge to develop a course. The course um, was entitled Christian Lifestyles. And it was to be taught to uh, ladies and gents who were in the senior class. And the purpose of the course was to highlight in the minds and hearts of those young ladies and gents who were preparing to graduate 
that as they were moving on to the next chapter of their lives, they better not forget to let the Lord Jesus lead them to the next phase of their life and, and all of those that would follow afterwards. And so I tried to develop that 18-week course with all of the things that, that I hope would attract uh, 17 and 18-year-olds as they were looking to the future. And so we had to develop a particular lexicon, a, you know, a, a listing of some words that would bring deeper meaning to faith. And one of the words that I wanted to focus great attention on with my students was the word vocation. And I shared with them the, the definition of vocation with a capital V and the word vocation with a small v. The, from the, the capital V, it was that God calls all of us to one of four sacred vocations, either to the married life or to the single life or to the consecrated life, that of sisters and brothers, or the ordained life of deacons, priests, and bishops. But I also wanted them to be very much aware that not only was God's voice calling them to one of those four vocations, but also there was the small v, the way in which the major vocation would be lived out either as a, as a sales clerk, or uh, as a mail delivery person, or as a doctor, or as a lawyer, or as a teacher. But the purpose of vocation, whether we're talking about it with a capital V or a small v, is this. Vocation from God is our ticket to heaven. And not only for us to come to heaven, but by way of our vocation, we're called to lead other people there as well. And so before you and I have a chance to reflect a little bit more about what that means in our own lives, let's take a look at it from the perspective of the Magi in today's gospel, huh? You know, you and I have heard in the gospel that the, these three Magi were bringing with them three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But I would like to suggest that what in fact helped them to do what they did to come a long distance to give honor and glory to the newborn king, there were three gifts that were embedded in their hearts and souls. The gift of faith, hope, and love. Think about that for a moment. First of all, you know they got the message, follow the star, it will lead to the newborn savior. And what enabled those three magi to be able to do that was the gift of faith. They knew that there was a higher power who was instructing them the direction that they would need to take. And let's get the picture a little clear. You know, from what historians will tell us, the Magi were coming from Persia, and they thought that their final destination was Jerusalem, but that distance between Persia and, and Jerusalem and finally Bethlehem was really about a thousand miles. And they didn't have benefit of the kind of vehicles that you and I have. They rode on a camel. And the distance of a thousand miles, we can presume, would take them at least four months in length. And think for a moment what that must have been like. The terrain wasn't an easy one to travel. They must have gotten exhausted because they were carrying with them valuable, uh, valuable material, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, there was the chance that they could be attacked by robbers. And yet in the midst of it all, they didn't stop believing in the message given to them by God to follow the star. And even when they arrived in Jerusalem, thinking that that's where they would find the king, they met Herod. And once again, he was trying to persuade them to move in his distorted direction. And once again, it was faith that did not allow them to give up. It was faith that brought them to the infant Jesus in the little town of Bethlehem. And then there was that gift of hope. A hope that would not let them give up. And even though in the course of their human feelings they might have wanted to turn back 
to a life that was much more secure. They knew that in the end, God was going to bring them to the ultimate destination which he wanted them to reach, and that was hope. And finally, we know, not only did they give the gifts of faith, of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they gave that out of the virtue of love, but then they proceeded to move in a different direction than that which Herod had called for, once again, out of love for the newborn Savior. You know, I, my sisters and brothers, as we think about those three virtues for the, the Magi, the ultimate destination for them was to really come and meet God. And it seems to me that as you and I are thinking about our vocation, both the capital V and the small v, it's meant to lead us ultimately to God's kingdom in heaven. That's why vocation means it's a ticket to heaven. And very clearly, how you and I can hope to get there is by once again cherishing those three internal gifts of the Magi, faith, hope, and love. Faith, that no matter what happens in the course of our lives, we never, ever, ever, ever presume to live without God being the foundation of who we are and what we do. But second of all, when we experience the ups and downs of life, where we may in fact be tempted to think that we're alone or think that we can't make it and are tempted to give up or, or are lured by the devil and everything else that he wants us to do. It's hope that keeps us going, knowing that God's going to provide for us the strength that we need as sojourners to God's kingdom in heaven. And finally... It's the gift of love that activates the faith and hope that's operative in our lives, helping us to see that our journey to heaven is not a solitary one. It's one that we make with the help of, other, of others, and it's a journey that we make trying to include others as well. And that has particular meaning for this faith community, doesn't it? You know, as we now mark the creation of this new parish of St. Augustine, think about how over the centuries people have been attracted to trust in God's healing power through the likes of St. Blaise. And think in a very real way. It was Monica, the loving mother, whose prayers brought great conversion in her son Augustine. And that captures the title of this faith community. You and I very shortly will now witness Father Kim's installation of this new parish of St. Augustine. And you know that working together with Father Kim over all these years, and especially with Father Noggle and Father Sizik and Father Bill and our deacon, that they've been working very, very, very hard to help every single one of you to live out your vocation with a capital V and a small V. May what we do here today, born out of faith, encouraged by hope, and activated by love, help us reach the destination to which the major were successful coming upon the Savior of the world. May our exercise of those three virtues, faith, hope, and love, put a smile on God's face when we reach the end of our lives and hopefully come to heaven. And so, my friends, I ask you now to stand with me as we mark the formal installation of Father Kim as the pastor of St. Augustine Parish. So dear Father Kim, uh, on June the 30th, 2007, you uh, stood before Bishop Paul Bradley, who was 
the diocesan administrator, and you embrace the call of God to the holy priesthood to follow in the example of Jesus Christ. And on that day, you professed before the Lord your fidelity to your call, recognizing that it was the way in which the Lord was calling you to get to heaven and charging you with the leadership to bring many others there as well. And so at this moment, I ask you, uh, before all of these people whom you love so much, uh, I ask you in a very special way to renew those promises that you made on the day of your ordination. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood and the presbyteral rank as a worthy fellow worker with the order of bishops in caring for this flock of the Lord? I do. Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of God's word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the authentic Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's richest tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and for the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray, to pray daily and without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united ever more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with Christ to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all. I do with the help of God. May God who has begun, do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? I do. May God who has begun this good work in you bring it to fulfillment. And so at this time I ask Father Nagel and Father Sizik, uh, for Father Bill and Deacon Harry to, to please also stand. Father Shrek, Father Nagel, and Father Sizek, and, 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 and Father Bill, and Deacon Denome will assist you in the pastoral care of the people of St. Augustine Parish. Share this ministry in a spirit of mutual trust, common prayer, and genuine concern. I now address these words to the members of the pastoral, Parish Pastoral Council and Finance Council. For this rec, these are the members of the Pastoral Council and Finance Council of St. Augustine Parish. They are the voice of your people, and they will assist you and counsel you as you continue to minister to the people of this parish. Consider with great care the advice they offer. I also speak these words to the members of the staff. For the, for the Shrek, I, the, the staff of St. Augustine Parish shares with you in the responsibility of the leadership of this parish. They participate in the leadership of so many significant aspects of this parish's life. You do not utilize their enthusiasm and their talents to build up this parish faith community. All the members of St. Augustine Parish now join with you, Father Shrek. People gathered here today are a snapshot of the folks who belong to this parish. Always be attentive to their needs and respond to them with the love of Christ. And so remember, Father Shrek, always, Shrek, always be a loving father, a gentle shepherd, and a wise teacher of your people so that you may lead them to Christ who will strengthen all that you do. And so as a teacher of the faith, I now ask you to lead your people in the profession of our faith. I, Reverend Kim Joseph Shrek, with firm faith, believe and profess each and everything that is contained in the symbol of faith, namely, I believe faith in, in one, one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day and in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With firm faith, I also believe everything contained in God's word, written or handed down in tradition and proposed by the church, whether by way of solemn judgment or through the ordinary and universal magisterium, as divinely revealed and calling for faith. I also firmly accept and hold each and everything that is proposed definitively by the church regarding teaching on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with religious submission of will and intellect to the teachings which either the Roman Pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise the authentic magisterium, even if they proclaim those teachings by an act that is not definitive. And so, Kim, I now ask you to affix your signature to this document that indicates what you've just done for us to, to help us go with you in professing our faith, and I will fix my signature as well. So every time a person is uh, taking on a new office in the church, it is imperative that they, um, in fact, do, uh, do an oath of fidelity to Jesus and his church. I now ask you to place your right hand on the sacred scriptures as you take that oath. I, Reverend Kim Joseph Shrek, in assuming the office of pastor of St. Augustine Parish, Beaver Falls, Chippewa, Darlington, Midland, Pennsylvania, promise that both in my words and in my conduct, I shall always preserve communion with the Catholic Church. I shall carry out with the greatest care and fidelity the duties incumbent on me toward both the universal church and the particular church in which, according to the provisions of the law, I have been called to exercise my service. In fulfilling the charge entrusted to me in the name of the church, I shall hold fast to the deposit of faith in its entirety. I shall faithfully hand it on and explain it and I shall avoid any teachings opposed to that faith. I shall follow and foster the common discipline of the whole church, and I shall observe all the ecclesiastical laws, especially those which are contained in the Code of Canon Law. In Christian obedience, I shall unite myself with what is declared by the bishops as authentic doctors and teachers of the faith, or established by them as those responsible for the governance of the church, I shall also faithfully assist the diocesan bishop in order that the apostolic activity exercised in the name and by the mandate of the church may be carried out in the communion of the same church. So help me God and God's holy gospels on which I place my hand. And once again, I ask you to fix your signature as I will do the same. David Allen Zubik, by the grace of God and the authority of the Apostolic See as Bishop of Pittsburgh, decree for the welfare of the people of God and appoint you the Reverend Kim J. Schreck, pastor of St. Augustine Parish, 
Beaver Falls, Chippewa, Darlington, Midland, Pennsylvania. I hereby commit to you the full pastoral care of souls in this parish with all the jurisdiction, faculties, duties, rights, and privileges attached thereto in accordance with the sacred canons of the Roman Catholic Church, as well as the statutes and other legislation of the Diocese of Pittsburgh for a term of six years. This appointment will become effective on Monday, January 2nd, 2023. May God grant you the grace and health to carry out this charge of priestly service for souls. Signed, David A. Zubik, Bishop of Pittsburgh, given at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on December 1st, 2022. Kim, as I uh, hand this decree on to you, it's more than a piece of paper. You and I firmly believe that it's the Holy Spirit who placed you here. And at the same time, I also express to you my gratitude to you, my affection for you, and for my love for all that you do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please know that uh, you also have the promise of my prayers, that what you do will always be inspired by the Holy Spirit and completed by the power of God's love. God bless you always. Thanks, Bishop. Thank you. Thanks. We get it all the time. Have you designed our coat of arms? Bishop, before Mass, they were all instructed to ham it up, but I think that was a little much, but. <laughs> Dear friends, the Lord has just blessed us in such beautiful ways all these years. And the Bishop coming today is actually a seal from the Lord, blessing what the Lord has done, and a seal from the Lord that comes with the Bishop for all the new things the Lord wants to do next. At our parish, Bishop, our staff and our councils and our people, these are real Jesus people. They love the Lord. And when you're talking about vocation, the broken hypocrites that we are, this is what we're about here, to glorify the Lord, to love him in the Eucharist and to serve the poor. So we thank you for your trust in all of us priests, all of the people of God that you can entrust us with 200 square miles of Beaver County. We, we take it with absolute seriousness that you have entrusted this little part of God's kingdom so that we can do what the Lord asks. Last thing, so many beautiful quotations from St. Augustine. This one, though, that the, God, the Lord our God will provide the wind, and we have to raise the sail. And dear friends, we've been blessed these years working together because we've done mighty works by just doing our little part so that the Lord can push us along. The Lord Jesus starts something new today, and it's another opportunity for you here, or all the people that are represented, to just do our little part and trust that God will make something beautiful of it. And even if your little part for the Lord seems a little crooked, or a little sideways, or it's less than you would hope, the Lord can use that. And so dear friends, let us cast out into the deep, let us let the Lord fill our sails, let us be true workers and true missionaries of the Lord Jesus. We priests, deacon, are so blessed to be with you. Bishop, thank you for the trust. Thank you for sealing this thing on behalf of the Lord Jesus. Thank you. So every new beginning begun by God can only come to a successful completion if we rely on God. We now lift up our prayers to our God who listens to us carefully and responds to us lovingly. The response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Mother Church, that she may be protected and strengthened, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the faithful of St. Augustine Parish, that they may live the corporal works of mercy as missionaries in this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for St. Monica Catholic Academy, that it may be protected and kept faithful to Jesus Christ's Eucharistic heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the Catholics of our parish who have fallen away from the faith, we beg you, God, that they may return to the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that the men and women of our parish will have the courage to follow the call of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, whom we commend to your mercy, in particular, John Gavin, and for all the holy souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also give honor and sacrifice of this Mass to Regis Benden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. In a very special way, we also once again express our gratitude for the leadership of our late Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, that God may give him just rewards for all the good that he did for so many people throughout the 95 years of his life. For him, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, hear us, heal us, and help us. Oh God, hear our every prayer. O oh Lord, heal our every wound. O oh Lord, help our every need. Grant this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our preparation hymn is number 148, We Three Kings, hymn number 148.
pray, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you reveal the mystery of our salvation in Christ as the light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your most unworthy servant, with my brothers William, William, and Mark, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal and living God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our Lord, our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. 
We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those whom you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. 
Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Official peace be with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 381, He Who Gave For Us His Life, hymn number 381. Our second communion hymn is number 109, What Child Is This?
us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Last few announcements. We also want to thank not just the bishop, Father Farrell, but the bishop has a lot of people in his office who have been a big help and continue to be a big help through this process. We also thank our friend Sharon Hackman who's over here. Sharon and I interacted exclusively through Zoom for several years, so it's always nice to see her smiling face. Immediately after Holy Mass, your friends are invited next door, and as you know, we do very well praying and partying. So next door, there's a huge celebration prepared, including an indoor bouncy house. Thank you for coming, Bishop. Thank you for coming. Dear friends, the Lord has good things for us. Let us be open to his holy will. So uh, just want to say a special word of thanks to you, Mr. and Mrs. Shrek. Uh, you have to be so proud to know that through the gift of your own faith, you have really supported Kim over all these years. I really uh, have to apologize to you a couple of times and said Shrank, okay? And, and we do have a Father Shrank, Father Alex Shrank, uh, who is uh, uh, at St. Raphael the Archangel. So just so you know, I know both of them, sorry that did the slip and it was no insult to your family name. So my apologies. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. To each of these invocations, I ask you to respond with an amen. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your sisters and brothers. Amen. When your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended, go in peace. Be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits prowling about the world, seeking the ruin souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 155, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, hymn number 155.